time now, we will look at when those two vectors are at obtuse angle towards each other. This is vector G and this is your vector E. What do I mean? The movement, direction of movement, yes, they are adjacent to each other. Now they have an angle here. Let's say this is phi. Or let's use, yeah, let's use phi. Now, how do you get your resultant A? Remember, the one we spoke about is what? At 90 degrees. From there, you obtain your resultant either this way or this way, whichever way. You'll be able to then using your what uh, Pythagoras train, you go, you obtain that. But at this junction, how do you resolve? How do you get your resultant? When you have an angle, remember, what type of angle is this? Your alpha here is going to be going to be an acute angle. What are acute angles? Angles that are lesser than what? 90 degrees. So that is why your alpha here, you can see it's obviously is below 90 degrees. So your alpha is an acute angle. So how do you obtain your resultant here? It's very simple. What do you do? Just break down this angle into two. Protrude the diagonal upward until you get to a point where the intersection, you know, here, let's say this one stops here. That's the key. You get until you get to this particular section, then you stop your line. You now name this as your result time. So from there, you will obtain a complete parallelogram. This is a parallelogram. Now, for you to solve parallelogram uh, question or problem, you have to understand the basis of your parallelogram law. There is a law that what that breaks this down and makes it easy or easier for you to what analyze. What how, what is your parallelogram law? Parallelogram law of vector states that if two vectors, look at it, if two vectors, if two vectors are represented in magnitude and direction by the adjacent side of the parallelogram, the resultant is represented in the magnitude and direction of the diagonal. Do you understand? If two vectors is represented by the adjacent side, the resultant is represented on the diagonal. That's what the law is saying of the parallelogram drawn from the common point. That's the law. I see it. The analysis is straightforward. Two vectors coming together, do you understand? Coming together on the basis of the adjacent. Now, for you to obtain the resultant, the resultant has to be a diagonal drawn from this common point. Do you understand? So, with that, you'll be able to what? know your what? Uh, you'll be able to solve your re re resolution whenever you have two what, vectors with respect to what? An acute angle. Now, what do we know? What, what are the knowledge that we need to know? Now, here, and what are the knowledge that we need to have? Yeah, this is, um, this is a parallelogram. The first thing you need to know, you must understand very well your cosine law or your cosine rule. You know, physics at times, not even at times, most times, physics and mathematics are very much interrelated. They are interwoven. So you must know your mathematics very well before you actually tackle this Pascal section. Another one you must know is your what? Your sine law or your sine rule. This cosine rule and this is your sine rule. Now, you have to do some little recap about this so that you don't get lost as regards the, break, uh, the breaking down of this particular section. Now, let's see. How do you go about that? Now, this is your parallelogram. If you have something like this, I'm not going to touch the one I drew here so that we'll use it for easy analysis. Now, this is your what? X axis. You may enable this space X. You have this face as Y, you have this face as V. Now you now name this face as theta. Now for you to obtain this X, mind you, you have to name label all this as A, B, and C. Now the opposite of A, the space that is facing this angle A, this angle A, you have angle A, B, C. It's like a triangle. Do you understand? Now you have to name this this angle A B C. The triangle is angle A, B, C. Now, the opposite of angle A, the side that is facing angle A, will be labeled as your small a. The side that is facing your angle B will be labeled as what? Your small b. While the side that is facing your angle C will be labeled as angle C. Now, for you to obtain all the possible cosine rule for this particular one, for this particular triangle, what do you do? You say A squared will equal to what? B squared plus C squared minus 2 you bring this together, BC cos the capital of this word, A. That is the first possibility of your word, cosine rule. The second possibility is what? If you are using your B, you are going to have B squared equals what? A squared plus C squared 
minus bring these two together 2 ac then cos of what capital of this that's the b now the third one is you have c squared equals a squared plus what b squared minus what 2 ab cos of what capital of what this c so these are the three possible formula you can use to obtain your what i mean in solving your what a pythagorean problem you understand i mean your parallelogram problem parallelogram issues you must know your what cosine law now when it comes to sine rule this is your cosine rule i need to do this recap so that you don't get lost by the time we start solving this now for your sine rule the formula is easier it's easy to all you just do is pick your a over sine of the capital a equals pick any of your b over sine of the capital b then equals c over sine of your, your capital b. what does this capital signify signify angle why the word small letter signifies size so this is your word sine rule so these two formulas are what we'll be using to what produce our result term so so how do we obtain our result term having the knowledge of these are cosine rule and your sine rule let's proceed yeah what do you do name this as your alpha now you now produce another angle here as theta mind you if you pro if you if you extend this line forward and you produce another line you know this particular line here is what parallel to this line don't mind my drawing it should be parallel why this one too should be parallel to this so if this is parallel to this definitely this angle will equal this angle now if this angle equals this angle definitely this are angle will be 180 minus our five if that is correct then we'll proceed so our angle here is 180 minus 5 we have the 5 so we have um now if the question now says your d your d is um 40 newton this the d e the e side is what 60 newton and the angle in between them let's say 30 degrees how do you proceed you now analyze it by saying okay we'll have something like this we we'll have something like this down here is um here is our these are e here is our 16 newton here is our 14 newton now remember this angle here is 30 so if this is 30 this way too will be what 30 so automatically this way should be 120 sorry 150 degrees how how do i obtain that angle we label it is our let's say a b c so angle C is what? 180 degrees minus what? 30 degrees. Why or how? Angle on a straight line. I don't need to break this down. You must have gotten the knowledge of this in your what? Basic sciences. Angle on the total angle in a straight line is 180 degrees. So by the time you bring the 30, what do you have? 150. So from there, our C is what? 150 degrees. So from there, we can now proceed by now obtaining and now to actually now uh, move ahead so from there we have uh we already have the angle in between so what do we need we need to produce this resultant so if you have to produce this resultant using one of the formula there we will have your what r squared equals this is r then equals your 40 squared plus what 60 squared minus your what 2 times 40 times 60 then you now bring it into bracket cost of what 150 degrees so by the time you do this you will obtain a particular value 40 here is 60 1600 your 60 here is 3600 then minus this time this will have uh two four zero zero then times two by the time you obtain that you're gonna have zero zero eight two four zero zero times two you have zero zero then you have your eight then you have your four four thousand eight hundred then times your cost 150 degrees so by the time you obtain that you will be able to get a result time for us to actually proceed so let's punch our calculator please after punching your calculator you will obtain something like this um the addition of the square of 40 the square of 60 now by the time you multiply this you have 480 times 2 you have um 40 times 60, that's 2,400 times 2, you have 4,800, then you have your cost 150. So 
So by the time you solve, you solve all this, you have this. So you now bring the square down here, you obtain this. Then you have your final result at 96.73. So for me, our result here is ninety six point seven three ninety. Now, how do you now obtain this angle? Because it is this angle that um, uh, the resultant is tending towards the horizontal. So you have to also um, get your angle. So for you to obtain your angle, you make use of your sine rule. Now, that sign, the sine rule you are using, you have to make sure it's actually the one that fits in into what you have. Your A, if per adventure we, we label this as our A, so that means this is A. So A is available there. You have your sign A. Do you have A as an angle? No. So we are using this. You, you, you start this. Number one that we are actually using. Then the other side, if this is B, does B as an angle? No. But does B as side? Yes. So there are two unknown already. So you cannot use two unknown. So you have to proceed to the third one where you have both being complete. This is C. As angle C here is 150. And the side of C is what? 96.3 Newton. So you are making use of A and what? C. So you draw it out. You now say your A all over what? Sine A will equal to what? Your small C all over what? Sine big C. So by the time you put the values, our A here is the side facing A is 40. Our sine A here is what we are looking for. Say sine theta. You now equals to the C. The opposite of C is 96. 96.73 Newton all over sine C. What is sine C? It is going to be sine 150. So by the time you compute that, you are going to have sine equals sine theta equals this times this. You have 40 Newton times your what? Sine 150 all over your 96.73 Newton. So after resolving this, your theta should give you 11.93 degrees so for from this value now you'll be able to now say okay our answer here will now give us um your resultant is 90 96.73 newton abby along north it's coming from the north north 11.93 degrees East. That will be the actual value of what your resultant. I mean, when two uh, vectors are inclined at an angle less than 90 degrees. So I hope we understand this particular method. At this junction, we are done with um, uh, quest or every issue or every problem relating to um, relating to vector quantities. Whenever they, we are considering two. So in our advanced in the advanced method, you will be looking at later on in this section. Or in our SS3 session, we'll be looking at when you have three, when you have four, and when you have five vectors being considered. So let's do some um, exercises, let's do some examples given.